how nature provides. And it doesn't really account for people's needs and of what I call people's demand for the services. So we have two sites. Site one is a site that is more forest. Site two is a for is a site that is more agriculture. Our results show, and I'm going to focus only on water here because it's what is more closely related to agriculture and just to uh, bring my point of the dependence and the impact. What we saw is that the site that was more um, 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 in, within the CAS area, not exclusively forest, but within the CAS that had the natural features and, natural, and the land, different land uses of CAS had um, not only was providing enough water for the people living in the region, but had, has a far higher potential to continue to meet the demand. There is abundant water um, on that side. On the other side, on the other hand, it's barely meeting the demand, which means that we are very much at the limit. There is really no more potential for expansion of agriculture in that area, simply because um, they are limited by the water that they could take. Uh, on the other hand, uh, levels of sediment were significantly higher on the site that was um, agriculture more closely associated with agriculture than, than on the other side, about six times. This all means uh, and this all demonstrates the role of forest in capturing precipitation water, regulating um, these flows to meet different needs, and also regulating <coughs> the sediment levels in, in, the, in the water. So, uh, based on our um, results, and the, um, I just have to say that this study is uh, far more comprehensive than that. There are also um, assessments of the economics of it, which I don't have time to go here. But based on our results, we really um, stressed, we really could infer the role of, of this protected area in, for food production in the sites that we looked in. And we recommended different kind of policies, but they all boil down to basically management practices that for conservation and sustainable production and harvest in the region, and also given the relevance of the region, really to um, recommend the government to look for um, means and ways to further protect the area, integrating the communities into this, um, the protection agreements and the management plans, decentralizing near forces in the region. Um, more broadly speaking, um, the lessons for us in general, from this study and in general, is really the need for us to further recognize the importance of natural areas for food production. I think for a long time we have taken um, much for granted in terms of the ability of those ecosystems to, to provide for, for food production and food security. And it's about time to really think more carefully about limits and, and thresholds. Um, sustainable practices are needed. Uh, governance is certainly something that needs to be um, um, enhanced in the region, in Madagascar, and in general, bringing the people um, and making them a solution, making them um, really use incentives mechanisms that, that, that would really allow them to um, be part of the solution. Capacity is also needed, of course. Uh, but, you know, ultimately what we need to start to thinking is really a transition to a more sustainable um, system. Um, this is the report that we produced. It's available online. If you um, do a Google on waves, um, waves, World Bank waves, you find this under the Madagascar um, website. They have um, sites for the different countries. Thank you so very much. Dr. Portela, um, thanks, thanks for your uh, presentation. Um, you, you highlighted that 
food and nature are intertwined through the services of ecosystem services, mainly the soil, the fertility of soil, pollination, pest control, and climate <coughs> regulation. But you also mentioned how the cultivation and harvest impact on, on these uh, services uh, through through creating some water or air pollution or use use of uh, unsustainable land use. And, and uh, based on uh, your, your case study was really interesting, based on the comparison of two sites, you have really highlighted how the water demand are met in conserved area, whereas in, in the non-conserved area, uh, it was at the threshold, and it was similar for the se sediment load. It was very high on, on in the non-conserved area. And, uh, quite interesting lessons there that we have taken from your presentation. Um, governance and improved management uh, are, are important tools that we should consider uh, besides improving technology for more sustainable production, uh, ways of production. Again, thanks, thanks for your presentation. Um, now, uh, Mr. Dalit Kumar, uh, assistant professor from Delhi University, will uh, make his presentation on agricultural progress and ecological degradation with a case study on Punjab, India. Dalit Kumar has been teaching in the Department of Business Economics, Bimra Ambedekar College. His area of interest includes mathematics for economics, industrial economics, statistics, environmental economics, and economic policy and development. His researching in environmental economics and his interest includes valuation and accounting for environment loss of biodiversity and effects of climate change. Uh, Lali, I would like to ask you two, two questions. And uh, as, as we all know, India was one of the achievers of green revolution. And can we now say that India has secured food, uh, secured the food for its population in Punjab. And secondly, what are the policy options that secure vital ecosystem services and secure food supply in a balanced way? The floor is yours. Thank you, Asim. A moment to all of you. I would like to first thank UNEP and IUC for giving me an opportunity to speak at this important event. Uh, <coughs> I am coming from India, which you know is a it's a low income developing country and whose almost 25 to 30 percent population live below poverty line. That is <coughs> having income of less than two dollars per day. And food security is a very big issue in India because a lot of people are not able to make their end meet. And to this effect, Punjab is a state which has produced a lot of food stuff and has taken the burden of providing food security to the state of India. Uh, I would like to just begin my presentation with showing that the state of Punjab is in northern western part of India. Uh, <coughs> in 1965, India was importing almost 15 million tons of food grain, mainly from America. And India used to be called a ship to mouth economy. That means when shipment used to arrive, then an Indian used to get some food. And at that one point of time, our Prime Minister asked the people of India that please keep food once a day because there is not enough to eat. And at that point of time, Punjab was a state which took up the burden of producing more food. And what has happened with that now? We are self-sufficient in all kinds of food, but what effect it has done on ecolog ecological degradation in terms of water and other services we will see. If you see the statistical profile, India is one of the largest populated countries of the world of almost 200 million. And in the last 10 years alone, we have almost added 220 million people. And our per capita income is around 1100 dollars. And if you can see the seal production, which was 49 million tons in 1951, has now increased to almost 210 million tons. But if you see the per capita availability of cereals, it is 
it has remained constant all throughout the last 60 years, which is a key flux which India is facing right now. Many studies have been done to see what is the estimated demand and production scenario and availability scenario in 2020, which says that India would be stressed in terms of production and availability. Though not in terms of demand, but in terms of production and availability. Because a lot of food in India which is produced is lost. It gets sorted, there are not enough production and storage space for the food we produce. And almost uh, at a recent estimate, 10 percent of the total food gets wasted and it gets sorted. Now, just to tell you what is happening in agriculture in Punjab, we Punjab has a reliance on high yielding variety seeds, which are very water fertilizer and capital intensive. Punjab adopted these new high yielding variety seeds, hybrid seeds, and it now almost produces 10% of the total grain production of India. In spite of having only 2% of the total area of India, and it contributes almost half of the total food to the central grain, to central food, in which the Indian government collects food from Punjab and then distributes to the rest of the country. Cropping intensity is almost 1 in 8 percent. That means each hectare or acre of land produces 2 crops per year, which is very high. And 97 percent of the net area is irrigated. And out of this irrigated area, 20 percent is through canals and 70 percent is through tubes and 80% water resources are used for irrigation in Punjab. The rest is for industry and household consumption. And Punjab, being the largest producer of food game, is the, it forms the basis of food security in India. Now, we can again see that the use of nitrogen has increased. It is almost 409 kg per hectare in Punjab and area under rice and wheat cultivation is almost 80 percent of the crop area and productivity of rice and wheat has increased to 8.3 tons per hectare and we can see that the, in the slide how the production of rice and wheat has increased all through the years in 1971 to 2009 with almost a four quantum jump in production of rice and wheat Again, see what is happening to agriculture growth in Punjab. The crop growth rate has declined to minus 0.03% and livestock and fishery and forestry are also not doing very much. In the terms of agriculture growth, in productivity growth, wheat has stagnated. In the last 10 years, Rice production also has stagnated. Cotton is growing at a little pace, but this stagnation of rice and wheat productivity is what is the leading cause for trouble for India right now. Because extra production is not coming from the existing area. There is no new area to be got in the rice and wheat cultivation. And the problem is how we are going to feed extra mouth, which are going to add in the next 10 years. If you can just see how the increase in nutrients has increased from 38 kg per hectare to almost 25 kg per hectare. <coughs> see the pupils. There were 192,000 pupils, but currently in Punjab we almost have now more than 12 lakhs pupils. Factors, there were 5,000 factors, and now there are almost 5 lakh factors in Punjab. See the shift in cropping pattern, rice and wheat are the two crops which are grown to the maximum, while other crops like maize and cotton and pulses and all seeds have all shown a steady decline. So Punjab is stuck in the rice and wheat combination, rice and then wheat. No other crop is grown. Now what has happened is that because of this intensive consumption of rice and wheat, it has led to a loss of 
ecosystem services, which I'm just going to show you in the next slide. Following diversity of crop, land degradation, groundwater depletion, rising incidence of nutrition deficiency in soil, and driving community and appearance of insect pest diseases. See the declining diversification index. Earlier, 41 varieties of wheat, 37 varieties of rice, and other varieties of bajra, sugarcane, and pulses were grown. But now, only 5 varieties of wheat and 8 varieties of rice are grown. This diversification index, which has fallen, has led to monoculture system of cropping which has again led to a severe degradation of ecosystem services. Now, the most important effect of increasing agriculture production in Punjab has been on the groundwater level. This groundwater level has been falling throughout the, throughout the last 20 years and it is over and above the declining rainfall pattern in Punjab. The total demand for water and agriculture is almost 4.3 million hectare per annum and the availability of water is only 3.3 million hectare. So this deficit of 1.25 million hectare per annum is met through tube wells. That means more water being extracted from ground to meet the ever increasing need of rice and wheat cultivation. And if you can see that what is the status of groundwater resources, percentage of area which was having water level up to less than 10 meters has now increased 93% and percentage of area which is now having groundwater less than 20 is now only 90%. That means 93% of the area is having water level greater than 10 meters. And we can see that in this slide there are, this is the general photograph of Punjab, there are two pupils. One which shows the earlier one which used to be, water used to be extracted, we could see the water, but now there, that water was available at 40 to 50 feet. But now water has decreased to almost 250 to 300 feet, all over Punjab. And it is decreasing at the rate of almost 0.7 to 1 meter per year. The decline in water level is almost a meter per year. And <coughs> but doesn't know when that water level or total water quantity would stop or totally degrade. This again slide shows what is the extent of degraded land. So out of 4.2 million hectares of land on which cultivation is done, more than half of land has become degraded because of <coughs> soil salinity, because of water logging and other aspects. Too much cultivation of rice and wheat has led to this severe degradation. The most important aspect of soil quality is soil organic content, which has shown a steady decline and it is almost now less than 0.2%, which is almost a very pathetic level. And sustaining rice and wheat cultivation in soils having soil organic content of less than 0.2% is very dangerous and risky for the future. We can see in the photograph, this is a recent photograph, the last one, how in the left photograph you can see white salts accumulating and the right hand side slide you can see this a dot, how uh, uh, bare land and decayed land because no crop could be done this year. Now coming to the profit to of farming, we can see that the real farming from business has fallen for the last 20 30 years and the incidence of poverty has increased to a very high extent in Punjab. In fact, it has almost increased from 8% to 12% in the last 20 years. Because of this, what is happening is that productivity is stagnant, incomes are falling, and all the farmers of Punjab, most of the farmers are into high debt, which is leading to a very high incidence of suicides. Almost 8,000 farmers have committed suicide in the last 10 years and incidence of cancer is one of the also the major cause or the side effect of rice wheat cultivation. In fact, Punjab is now for the cancer capital of the world. And 
with a special train which goes from Punjab to a hospital nearby, which only carries the cancer patient. Because so many pesticides and fertilizers are being pushed into the soil of Punjab to get extra output, that it has severely degraded the ecosystem, the soil, the water, and it's affecting the whole human cycle of the agriculture system. Now, what are the initiatives which have been taken by the government or the private sector? The government has banned a number of fertilizers which are coming cancer. There is the implementation of nutrient-based subsidy and policy for coated fertilizer. And there is also a scheme by the government of India to prevent and over not to overdraw water from soil of Punjab. But the main scheme is to diversify the rice and wheat cropping system of Punjab to other high value cash crops like potato, sunflower, basmati and garlic. But this diversification scheme is not working because for rice and wheat the government gives a fixed price irrespective of the production size, the production bad, 